Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm. One of New Zealand's largest static car shows has morphed itself into a very cool mechanical mecca. Here in Cumu, it's got everything going for it. The grapes are growing for the wineries. There's even a railway line running through the joint. What more could you want? It's the 2020 Cumu Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. And you're about to see some of it on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Well, here we are in Cumiu, and over many years I have watched this event grow to what it is today. There is just so much to see and do here. I guess it's a kind of come to Cumiu type deal, so that you can experience it for yourself. This is a classic car show that caters for our hot rodding fraternity as well complete with a weekend of family entertainment. There's many acres covered in cubic inches, plenty of colour and lots of chrome. Whatever your mechanical passion holds, this event has it on the menu. Check their website to see the full extent of how entertaining this weekend really is. Well, this is Friday, technically the setup day. This is the grassroots, the beginning. The magnitude of this event and the effort that has to go in to put it together each and every year is enormous. And being here on a Friday, it's making it more of a three-day event than a two. Making our way through the amazing Cumu, Cumu, Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival for 2020. How you doing, Yarn? Good, Fletch. How are you today? Good, mate. Good. Appropriate first name of Yarn. Yeah, it is. I'm born with it, unfortunately. <laughs> well, hopefully right now we're going to have one. Now, I've picked on you because of the plainness of your car. We're talking a 1961 Chevy. Yep. It's a two-door post car, yep. uh, which means it's not pillarless. It's got the frame. And the Bel Air being the base model as well. What's the story on it, Yarn? Uh, came in about five years ago into the country, and um, I've been looking for a car you know with a wife that was basically a rust free original example of something that nobody really had you know it wasn't that belly button car that looked like a Mustang or anything like that that thousands of people have um, there's be there's the Impalas and, and that but this was just a really nice straight big nice big cruisy car to sit in nice cruisy car to drive um, and we loved it, you know. Now this is why I've chosen to have a yarn to yarn because of the plainness of this car and it stands out. It's a it's a post car as well. It's not pillarless. It is it is rare and it's plain. Um, the steel wheels, the push on hubcaps. This is what I love about your particular car yarn. Yeah, I love it too. I mean, um, it hasn't been redone through every you know decade. You know, somebody's gone and put another set of wheels onto it and trim this and, you know, you got 15 layers of filler and bog underneath it. It's pretty well much a survivor as it was driven, you know. Here at QMU, it's all about the variances and what you'll find out on the field. There's no such thing as ordinary here. It's almost anything goes, isn't it, Jan? Yeah, there's some wild rides here and uh, some awesome machines, awesome power plants sitting underneath the hoods, um, and some of them you can just see go like rockets. So I just love, you know, love that side of it as well. <laughs> yeah, and we look at your car in terms of the power and under the hood. Tell us, share with us. What is sitting there stock standard? It's just a straight six sitting in there from day one. Hasn't been molested, hasn't been done anything with it. Well, Jan, there's no doubt it's certainly a fine example. I, I just love the, you know, the, the thin stainless steel trim that's still in place. And when you look around the back of the car, that to me just reminds me of early NASCAR. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's being the base, earliest base model of it, it's before all the big flash trim starts hitting the cars, you know, as they keep on renewing the model, you know, from one Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3 versions, the trim gets bigger and flashier, so this is entry model, early early year of it, um, you see the 59s and the 60s, you're going to end up with a huge amount of chrome on them, like new model, back to basics on the trim, you know. Very cool, Jan, thank you very much once no again, worries. mate. Thanks, Fletch, have a good day.
Classic Restos is not always about the high-end cars. I like to give the little guy with a car with less of a spotlight just as much recognition as well. And I'm sure you'll agree that Yarn's 61 two-door Chevy Bel Air fits that bill quite nicely. Moving through as we do, when it comes time to a customised 1968 Dodge Charger, boy, this thing is insane. It's off the Richter scale. How are you, Matt? Not too bad, Fletch. How are you today? Good. There's nothing that has been untouched on this car. Now, we'll start with the engine first, run through the specs of what you've done there. Well, it's a um, 440. Um, everything was stripped back, all forged internals put in there, flat top pistons, um, low compression ones, obviously, custom cam grind. Roller rockers, everything just from just one end to the other. We had to make it so it would handle the moss and the methanol and, and uh, obviously the, the blower. So we, we, we did the whole hog to make sure it would stay together. Now, interior, customised again. Thoughts there? Yeah, well, um, I didn't like they each their own. The purists might, you know, throw rocks at me, you know, for, for doing what I've done, but I wanted it's my car. And if, and if they don't like it, well, that's okay. So I, I just decided I wanted a vision in my head. That's how I wanted it and stripped the whole interior and I started again and did it the way I wanted it. Now Matt, when we move around the back of the car, those gorgeous round tail lights straight away tell us all day long it's a 68 Charger. Uh, nice to see those in place. Um, suspension in the rear, which way have you gone there? Uh, well it's got four link um, suspension. I took the original um, leaf springs out and we started again basically. And then we went with um, some Ride Tech self leveling air ride suspension um, all the way around. Um, and so far it's it's worked out pretty good. I love how you've got it on your phone. You just control it from your phone. Yeah, oh, that's what that's. I think that's what um, that's what sold me Fletch, on the, the whole thing was when I saw that uh, the on, online what what it could do. Rang the company up and they said, yeah, you can do it online. You can buy um, remote controls for anything. You just away you go on the run. I said, I, don't, I want one. Matt, I've got to say, love your number plates, mate. Eat you four T, and then down the bottom, don't waste your gas. Yeah, well, actually, if you had a look at the top part, it says I would. I would eat you for tea. Don't waste your gas. I had to do it. Now, in the world of Mar Mopar, the 1968 Charger by Dodge is so significant. Um, I guess, as you mentioned before, purists, the way you look at it, in terms of customising, you've, you've just gone fully, fully all the way. Um, how was the car originally? What can you tell us about it, uh, how it once was, Matt? Well, the car was actually been... Um they, the, the gentleman who started restoring it had been restoring it for many years and unfortunately he um, died and so his um, widow ended up on selling the car but you know like he did a nice job for someone that built it at home um, now it wasn't anything that I wanted to do or I liked but I could see the future that it could be I could see I could envision what it was going to be and it was solid and it was, that's all I cared about good on you mate as I said Credit to you, Matt, and uh, really appreciate your time here in the chat, mate. No worries, all Fletch. Thank you, day. Are you a motoring enthusiast? Does your current insurer understand your passion? At Shannon's, we're motoring enthusiasts, just like you. We understand the passion you have for your special car or bike. But did you know that Shannon's will also insure your daily drive, the car you drive every day? So if you're a motoring enthusiast, you've got to be with Shannon's. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. In 2020, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2020 Detroit tour with Fletch. Well, here we are in the Kumu Vintage Caravan section. How are you doing, Kerry? Yeah, morning, Fletch. Yeah, well, we're doing really well, thanks. Lovely, chilly morning, a bit cooler than uh, yesterday, but... Absolutely. This is a very cool section. Vintage caravans, classic cars, they go hand in hand with each other. I absolutely love your combination here. A 59 tank Fairlane wagon, your beautiful Airstream over the back there. But let's talk about the car first. Um, the story on it with its finish, it just looks so good. It's finished in its complete with its guide coat. Looks sensational, mate. What's what's happening with it? Yeah, look, we um, purchased the car two years ago out at Invercargill and uh, brought it back, and it was this beautiful lavender colour, as you see. 
Um, however, we uh, we put a new engine in it and um, just played around with it. It is it is basically a towing vehicle for our 54 Airstream, which we love and uh, and get a huge amount of enjoyment out of. Um, but the cars sort of progress slowly. It's not a you know show car at all, uh, but from 20 metres it looks fantastic. Uh, the paint job, um, we found some guys at GT Restorations in um, Penrose in Auckland and they painted this car uh, in seven hours. So it's had about six coats, including the logos, including sanding back, including clear coat. They were absolutely fantastic and we love the look, absolutely love it. And it suits towing the caravan. It's the sort of car carry that was new in 1959, it might have been 10 years on in 69 and it's starting to get that look and obviously that's what you're trying to achieve here. I love the, the, the stickers on the glass as well, uh, representing places that the car may have been. Uh, it's just so period correct. Um, now in terms of running gear and the way the car runs, uh, mechanically what have you done there? So look, we've, um, we've replaced all the brakes, we've upgraded those. Uh, with the 352 was rebuilt at Papaka Engine Rebuilders um, and it runs really, really well. Um, it's got a nine inch rear end, but it's still automatic. We might change it out later on. Yep. But for a tow vehicle, it's pretty much, you know, what we're after. We've had Kerry's wagon, now it's time for his van. Now this Airstream van, I love this. I had a quick look inside earlier. This, this is an amazing thing. It's a 1954 Airstream van. You tell us the rest of the story, Kerry. Because <laughs> frankly, I'm blown away. This is, this is a, an amazing thing. Yeah, look, thanks, Fletch. Yeah, yeah, well, look, we, we're very proud to own this. We um, we brought it in from Kansas uh, three years ago, and it was a bit of a project. So um, we pulled it apart, and and I remember one day sitting on a, a, a little stall, um, you know, drilling out the rivets around the bottom before we pulled the top off the trailer, thinking, I wonder if it will ever go back together, because it was a task. In Australia, if we had a van in 1954, you would have been towing around something made out of plywood. These things were just light years ahead, weren't they? Yeah, they were, and they come out of the aviation industry, actually. Um, um, Wally Byron, I think the guy's name was, and, and he started it in the early 40s, and um, a lot of aluminium, a lot of rivets, and they say that 70% of them are still on the road. Uh, it's got a certain feel about it. When you stand in there and look down in towards your bedroom section, uh, without being personal there, Kerry. Um, it, talk about go away with your partner. Uh, it, it's got a real ambiance about it. It's got a it's got a nice feeling about it. And then you look back the other way into your little lounge area. I love the neatness. I love the simplicity. I love it how it's not cluttered. It's just all there in theme from the Wizard of Oz, right? Correct. Yeah. So we've themed it from the Wizard of Oz because we brought it out of Kansas. Like you mentioned, Kerry, uh, a lot of Americana here. Uh, it typifies this 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 whole road that you've gone down. Uh, no pun intended on that. Um, the way you've got it set up out the front, you've got your chairs, you've got your awning, the American flag there. Uh, it's the sort of place where you feel welcome. You know, you you, you want to just sit there all day. And and as I said, walking inside, it's another dimension, mate. Thank you so much for uh, for sharing this with with us on uh, this week's episode of Classic Restos, mate, because it's very special. Thank you. No, you're very welcome. Thank you for, uh, for having us on. Time now for a delightful 1959 Thunderbird. How are you, Ronnie? Very well, thanks, Fletch. That is good. Are you enjoying Cumia for 2020? Well, it's my second time I've been here, so, so far so good. How cool are you with this Thunderbird? Uh, beautiful colour, a nice white roof. It's got a glorious interior. Well, where did you find it? Um... Actually, we were on our way to Rotorua in about an hour before we arrived at, to go and have a look at a radio. Um, I was told we were going to look at a car, and two hours later we'd purchased her. So um, it was a sh very short visit as far as I was concerned. That's what happens when you go to look at, for a radio. Uh, you went to buy a car as well. Yeah, and not just a car, <laughs> a 59 Thunderbird. Yes. Now, in all its exuberance sitting here in the paddock, uh, in terms of restoration and work that's been done, what's the story there, Ronnie? We haven't done a huge amount to her yet, apart from a new top. I mean, she's got a 352 um, under the hood, but we, she is actually due for a paint in about I don't know, a couple of months. Part of the reason we bought the car, or well, I bought the car, is I love the baby blue. That's what I fell in love with. I'm not particularly mechanical. I like the style, I like the colour and the look of the car. When I see a lady drive a Thunderbird, I automatically think of Penelope Pitstop, um, and we look at the 55 baby birds. In terms of, of the Thunderbird cars, um, was the 59 the year that you were particularly looking for? It, it came along and, and you just fell in love with that? 
I think really I'd had a look at a number of them throughout the years, but I think it was the 59 I liked the most, yeah. just in terms of its styling, its look and its windows. Yes. The Thunderbird Club uh, of America, a huge following, and a good friend of mine, uh, Bart, over there in the United States, has a big following. Uh, there's a big community in Australia as well. They've, they've really hung, hung on these cars. Uh, are, you, are you a part of any club here in New Zealand? Um, we are, f um, well, we do know a few people f from the Thunderbird Club and we have done a number of runs with them. Um, my partner Kerry is a member, I understand. Uh, but I guess it's just because my, he also jo is, belongs to a car club. Yeah. We go to a number of events with that, yeah. so um, it's not just one genre we tend to follow with the car. Ronnie, an absolute delight to catch up with you at Coombe here for 2020 and your incredible Thunderbird. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you very much, Fletch. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them and racing them. If you're into rods or customs, You'll know what I mean. It's all about passion, purity, and soul. Customs and hot rods like the SoCal Roadster is what we do. And insurance for cars like ours is what Shannon's do. Rods, customs, and even your daily drive. Call Shannon's on 134646. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Like us. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. You know, there's no doubt about it, here at Cumu, it's a bloody amazing place. It's over 100 acres of chrome-plated automotive glory. Now, it's my job to show you around as best I can, as quick as I can, and I've got this vehicle here, and they just don't give these out to anyone because you've got to know what you're doing before you operate one. Come with me. Now, a very important part of the Cumu event is the swappers section. It's all lovely to have the chrome out in the paddock, but just over on the other side, there are literally tens of thousands of parts for sale from private people. Good friend of mine here, Andrew. Welcome, mate. Good to see you again. Cura Fletch, and uh, uh, welcome back to OTRR. Thank you very much. You've got a pretty cool little stand happening here this weekend, Andrew. Yeah, all new old stock Holden parts, Fletch. All new old stock Holden parts. Just basically, uh, you've got to make something that's worthwhile, so it's not just the usual crap that someone's dragged out from their grandma's shed and stuff like that. But um, well, It's good to see it's all holding together. It is definitely all holding together, and some of it, uh, it's actually us pampering parts is the truth. Yeah. Well, we, we feel sorry for them sitting on their shelves, so we bring them out for a nice weekend away, yeah. and uh, hopefully they can go and find a new home and sit on someone else's shelf. Mate, what are some of the things that you have on sale for this weekend? We bought up a container load of uh, parts from, uh, from another uh, dealer, and uh, basically, if you want the uh, needle, sometimes you've got to buy the whole haystack. I wanted the FEFC parts, there's only a handful of them, but I bought everything. So I'm here to sell off all the stuff that I don't need. Now, credit where credit is due, uh, Andrew's a very clever guy, a very clever fabricator. Now, you might remember on last year's show, there was a uh, Candy Apple Red uh, EK Holden panel van that uh, Andrew played a, an integral part in on the paddock. It looked absolutely sensational. So, mate, with all your projects happening, it would stand a reason why you've got the parts you have left over? Well pretty much you've got to fund your habit so what you've got to do is work out ways of making some money to fund the next parts of the project. Now for example this weekend all I've got to do is turn over around about a thousand odd dollars which is easy enough to do selling new old stock holding parts so I can go and pay the chrome platers right. so I can get some more chrome plating done for the projects that I've got sitting there in the sheds at uh, home. And uh, so that's, that's the reason that I will come out of the hills once a year and uh, basically try and sell some stuff off and uh, try and make a little bit of money on the side. The trick is uh, to try and find that sweet spot where you're happy to let it go and someone's happy to pay the price. And uh, when you've got a lot of oddball stuff, 
uh, it does make it a little bit more of a challenge, and I like the challenge, you know. Good on you, Andrew. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much, Fletch. Always a, always a pleasure. Thanks, mate. It is, mate. Cheers. Thanks, Fletch. Okay, moving through the swappers and traders part of the event. Now, take this, for example. It's a real pisser. It's a used Coroma S-Trap pan. And because it's used, that means it's been tested. Now, it's not plumbed up here today, but if you take short and you feel a little flushed, it could help you out for one application if need be. If you're not interested, wipe it off your hit list. Back out here in the paddock, Kumu outside the show sheds. We're outside the uh, cooking area behind me, we've got uh, 45 guys doing a barbecue competition for Jack Daniels. And uh, the trade sites around here is pretty full and also we've sold out of swap sites. However, we've had a really good attendance and uh, and it's good to see that everybody keeps coming back every year. Car entrance coming for free. Uh, that's what we're trying to do all the time is, is that the driver gets in for free and we've had about three and a half thousand cars in today. And uh, we've got, you know, like in the show sheds, we've got the usual thing which would be good to see. And uh, we've got a good police presence here. And, uh, but there's some guys doing some big builds here now and they're actually building the cars to get their cars in the show. And, and it's, uh, it, it's quite good, you know, it's sort of uh, very, uh, very different now. This year we decided to try something different, a retro caravan thing. Everybody in the world's doing it, so we thought, oh, well, we might as well follow suit. And uh, we got quite a few retro caravans with towing in with their retro cars, which is quite amazing. About 26 years ago we started this event, and we've run it always on the same weekend, same time, same channel. No matter what, rain, hail or shine, it's always at the same time. And what actually happens is, is that we've all worked together all the way through. And now Desmond and I are just running it for, our, for everybody else and the families and all that. And I'm very respectful of everybody coming along here because we're only, we're only putting it on for them. So it's a participant event, it's not our event. We open it up, we advertise it and then they respect it, which is pretty cool. And we're all like happy families here and you know, like no stress, no bother. It's, uh, it's a westy thing. It's, uh, this is an area of um, lion red and black t-shirts and mullets. It's all about attitude out here and everybody's got a good attitude. It's sort of like, uh, it's their event. So they're, they're wrapped, you know, they, come and enjoy it and, and to help pay for them to enjoy it we've got to invite the public on and the public come in during the day and have a look around and buy stuff. You're always buying stuff you don't really need but you might need it someday but that's what Kumu's about. Kumu's a lifestyle thing so we're really pleased to be here. You know. There's something different here every year at QMU. How are you doing, Luke? I'm very well, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Now, Jack Daniels plays a big part of the event here. What's going on behind us? Uh, this is the uh, first round of the uh, national series we have in New Zealand for low and slow barbecue. And this is the uh, Jack Daniels QMU Barbecue Championship. How cool is that? It's not all about cars. You can get a great feed here as well. And I suppose with what you do, there's a lot at stake. Yeah, there's, uh, there's 37 teams. <laughs> I get it now, eh? There's 37 teams competing this weekend for... Uh, $10,000 prize pool and um, and bragging rights for the first comp of the year, so it's a big one for the, for the guys. Everyone wants to be here. So well, It's a case of just getting in for your chop, isn't it? Oh, God. <laughs> Love it. Uh, it is, actually. Uh, you've got to be in it to win it, so uh, some real good teams in here uh, competing. Well, the thing is, just don't mince around. Come, come in there as quick as you can and be a part of it, Luke. That's, that's one-liners are awesome. I've got to remember these next time, eh? Oh, no, <laughs> good. No, there's no fat in it, mate. Seriously, it's all... Just all lame one-liners all day, mate. It's been a big weekend for you so far, right? It's been a massive weekend since Thursday. We've been packing in and, uh, and getting everything set up. So it finishes tomorrow afternoon, So, uh, but it's a great four days. Well, anyone that says it's not a good thing, mate, it's a load of tripe, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Lucky we aren't doing tripe. I don't think I get any judges to do that, to be honest, mate. Seriously. <laughs> all right. No, on the serious side, Luke, it's been a pleasure catching up with you, mate. I think what you're doing here is fantastic because have, have a go at these barbecues. I mean, who wouldn't want one of these in their backyards? I wish you were my neighbour. <laughs> oh, mate, our neighbours hate us the smoke going over the fence but they don't mind the feed afterwards I can tell you that but uh, no it's a great it's a great, great environment it's good to, to show other people what's going on with barbecue and uh, and they love a good feed so how many barbecues have we got running here at the moment there's 37 teams each team will probably have 
probably three to four barbecues for different things. So what is that, like 120, 130 barbecues? Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a fair few. And the aroma, it, it's there's parts of the ground here where it just wafts through and uh, you just, you, you're just you permanently hungry. You are, mate. It's uh, it's it's one of those things, and that's 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 the cool thing about barbecue. It's a, and it's uh, it's an all day thing. These guys get in here, they're cooking and they're competing, but they're sitting back and then catching up with everyone, having a few drinks and having a feed. It's yeah. it's, it's good fun. Yeah. Good on you, Luke. Keep, keep up the great work, mate. Thanks, Rich. Cheers, mate. You're right, have a good weekend. You too. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed part one of the 2020 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. And part two will be on next week's show. And boy, are you in for a treat. And the reason being is that the sensational show sheds are going to be featured. And like every year, there is some sensational stuff in there awaiting us. So, until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, and Pace Farm.